Okay. It seems that we are live right now. So hello everyone, uh, if you are listening to us and welcome to our third Young Green late night talk. Uh, this late night talk is, or maybe rather late evening talk, is hosted by the Federation of Young European Greens, FYG, and our Future of Europe Working Group. Uh, this time we will, be, we will be talking about the German federal elections. Part of today's event is a talk, so there is a discussion, but also it is an educational webinar. So we really want to engage with all of you who are listening to us right now, and we would like to invite you to send us your questions. Uh, you can do so by posting your questions on our Facebook event or uh, via Twitter by using the hashtag Young Green Talk. So my name is Susanna Pavelkova and I'll be um, the moderator of, of tonight's talk. And uh, I have here three guests tonight. Uh, one of them is uh, Moritz Heuberger, who is the co-spokesperson of Grüne Jugend. Welcome, Moritz. Uh, the second person is uh, Christy Luisa Rades, uh, who is the co-coordinator co of the FYG Future of Europe Working Group. Hi, Christy. Hi. And the third person is Fabian Wagner, who is the co-spokesperson of the Federation of Young European Greens, FYG. Hello, of you. And before we get some questions from the public, uh, I will start, uh, I will use my role as a moderator to post uh, some, some questions which are of my interest and hopefully also of the interest of others. So let's start maybe with the most obvious question and that's the result of the elections. 8.9% uh, for the Greens, which is uh, better than what the polls were suggesting just uh, one week before the election. 75% uh, of voters showed up to the elections, which is a higher turnout that, than in 2013. At the same time, um, the, the election results are a loss for the CDU-CSU, despite the fact that they ended first, they gained only 32.9% of the votes, which is 8% less than in the last elections. Also a major disappointment for the Social Democrats, who gained 20.5% of the votes, which is again 5% less than um, in 2013. The Liberals will be re-entering the Parliament with and most importantly, uh, perhaps a shock for many, uh, the um, right-wing alternative of Deutschland and first, this means that the far-right party will be entering the Bundestag for the first time since 1945. Uh, what was your first reaction, uh, Moritz, Christy, and then Fabian? Yeah, so, um, hello from my side and thanks for the invitation. Um, the, the, we had mixed feelings on, on Sunday because um, the first reaction was uh, the very, very um, high um, results for uh, the AFD, which um, is shocking. You already said we now have um, like radical right in the in the parliament, which um, like people who deny the Holocaust and stuff like that. This uh, will be a really tough time. Um, on the other side, you already mentioned, we had better results than expected, but on the same um, side, we had the goal to have a two-digit result. We had the goal to be the third um, um, strongest party. And now the AFD is the third strongest party, so it's a bitter loss. Um, so not everything is fine. And um, at the moment, everything looks like um, it's going to the direction that the Greens have to um, go to a coalition with um, the Conservatives and Liberals because the Social Democrats um, already said that they won't be um, ready for government. Same thing for AFD and the same thing for the left party. So the only majority left is uh, the one of Greens with Conservatives and Liberals, which makes things even more difficult. Um, so very, very mixed feelings. Yeah. Thank you, Moritz. We continue with Christy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think from my side, um, personally, the first thing, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't that shocking 
for me that uh, the AFD got so many votes because in the recent years, in the last years, you saw them rising and in polls from some days ago was also quite obvious. Uh, of course, it is shocking because it's um, an overall very negative subject. Um, it also was quite shocking that the two uh, bigger parties, SPD and CDU, CSU, uh, lost so many votes. Um, what I really liked, a uh, positive shot, was that uh, the left and the Greens uh, got uh, still quite a lot of votes. Um, sometimes I had the fear that uh, the left or even the Greens couldn't enter Parliament. Um, and yeah, well, the neoliberals, um, I didn't expect them to grow over 10%, to be honest. Um, I think you could see the trending already some months ago and some weeks ago. But in the end, of course, um, the, the final numbers were overall quite, um, uh, yeah, overthrowing. So, so far from my side. Thank you. Uh, Fabian, your opinion? Well, I'm still shocked. Um, I mean, Christy is totally right that we kind of saw this coming, but I'm still shocked because now the far right has such a huge platform for the hate speech for promoting all their really ugly and disgusting uh, things. And usually they are very good at making use of all the opportunities which they are offered or which they achieve for themselves. So I'm quite worried that they will use this one as well and uh, carry their uh, ugly um, convictions even further into society. At the same time, I'm quite intrigued to see the conservatives lose so much because it clearly proves that it definitely doesn't work to try to copy the far right, that this makes the original more stronger than ever. Um, as we have seen, they were strongest in Bavaria, where the parts of the conservatives which are running there have uh, copied the far right's narrative to the, the biggest extent. Um, and it's also where the far right was strongest. So yeah. And I'm very excited to see what is going to happen in the next weeks uh, with the coalitions. Talks. They seem to be the next very, very hot and very intensively debated uh, issue. Um, as you mentioned, Moritz, it's, it's, it's for Greens, the position is quite difficult. Um, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, the then co-spokesperson of Green Jugend have called the party to actually strive for a red, red, green coalition at the federal level, which would involve green, the Greens, SPD and Linke. Uh, now the SPD already announced, as you, as you also mentioned, that they will be not part of the government. So the, the Jamaica coalition is the new buzzword, uh, which would involve CDU, CSU, the Greens and the Liberals. Um, so there seems to be really a lot of pressure on the Greens to enter such coalition in order to prevent what some see as, as a risk of destabilization or a risk of, of new elections taking place, which would probably um, make the far right profit even more and at the same time uh, entering a coalition bit you might be as it would force them to make compromises on a range of issues so maybe without aiming and presuming the result uh, the, the interesting question is also how will uh, Greener Jugend position on any potential future coalition be formed Okay, let, let me start with uh, what, what you said to, to a left coalition, like a red, red, green coalition. That's something which was possible for the last 10, over 10 years, with an exception of some years. But like the last four years, we had a left majority in the parliament and uh, they didn't, uh, they did not um, use this majority um, because of some fights, especially between the social democrats and the left party. Um, so now we have the first Bundestag um, since a long time that uh, this majority is not possible anymore. And I think with the far right and with strong liberals, um, 
uh, we won't have a left maturity um, for the next 10 years. Um, so we really missed an opportunity for a real change and it won't come back as soon. Um, now the question is, um, you already said, um, it looks like we have to go to this coalition which is called Jamaica you know, because of green, yellow and black. Um, but I don't think that it's an automatism that we have to go there, that that's the only alternative. Um, because um, the Green Party in Germany um, was never a left party only. We have a left wing. We have also a reformist wing, which is not, which doesn't call itself left. Um, so there are d different parts in the party. Mm, but um, normally the Greens are somehow part of the left in Germany, like of the left parties. And do, uh, performing in a, in, a, in a Jamaica coalition would mean that the Greens would say goodbye to the, to the parliamentarian left, to the left in general in Germany. We wouldn't be um, part of the movements anymore like we are at the moment. Um, so it, it would be a, a big, big step for the Greens. Um, and it, um, it's uh, a risk for the Greens to um, not um, not be strong enough to be in the parliament next time. Because if the Greens only make a coalition as the um, as the ecological plus in the in this coalition, the actual ecological add-on, um, it won't suffice the, to to be back there again in the parliament in four years. So um, we have to make very, very hard um, um, co coalition talks. Um, we will be involved as Grüne Jugend, um, but um, <clears throat> like we said, that for example, um, deportations to Afghanistan is a no-go, um, as well as, um, as other stuff in social policy and ecological policy. Um, and yeah, I personally, I won't be in a party who makes deportations to Afghanistan uh, legal and just um, holds them on. Um, so that would be a reason for me to to leave the party as Grüne Jugend. We try um, to fight for different issues, uh, as a, for example, the, the Afghanistan deportation thing. Um, I don't have the hopes that... Um, there will be a coalition where all these things are included, especially because the the conservatives now want to go more in the right direction, like tend more to to push more right. So I really don't see it. I don't have the imagination that um, we will have a coalition. So maybe there won't be a coalition. And um, I already think that it's not automatism and yeah and in the end the social democrats they have to come back from their you don't want to go to a coalition um thing so maybe they will come back or we will have new elections and i don't think that um the greens would be like so badly in, in new elections the only thing is we should not be the ones who cause the new election so if we stay hard and if the others say it's not possible to make um, a coalition, then we're not the idiots. And that's what we try to fight for, that staying hard, um, um, don't, don't, don't get weak. And um, if it will break, um, we should not be the ones who are um, to blame for. Thank you. Um... Fabian and, and Christy, how does the Jamaica coalition resonate with you? And we can maybe start now with Fabian and then go to Christy. Well, as Moritz already said, um, we shouldn't be the ones who are obviously causing this to break down. So I think we should talk to everybody, but I'm totally lacking the fantasy or creativity or whatever else is needed to uh, make this coalition happen because there are two parties especially it's a four-party coalition not a two-party coalition and two of the, these four parties 
are really, really opposed to everything we as Koreans stand for. I'm talking in particular about the part of the conservatives which are running in Bavaria only, which are way more right still than the conservatives which are running uh, in the rest of the Republic to which Merkel belongs. Um, so I can't really see what they could possibly offer us. They are going to move further to the right. They already announced that they are going to move further to the right to try to woo the voters which they left uh, lost to AFD, which are quite a lot. Um, and yeah, moving further to the right from where they already are, I really don't see how Greens could support this by being part of the government. I think we are already kind of losing an opportunity to uh, really point out what they did wrong because you see it, as I mentioned earlier, you see it so clearly that their strategy of copying the, the language of the far right did really, really not work. They really damaged them. And yeah, there's some very nicely worded criticism about this. People are pointing it out every now and then, but so carefully. We could really tell that this is not working, that we need to find different ways to uh, to tackle the far right, and definitely not by copying their language or by making any concessions to them. We are completely missing the opportunity to uh, give this topic a bigger stage because we need to be so careful about what we say, uh, because our ideas are so different from uh, parts of the conservatives. So. Yeah, let's talk with them, but unless something very dramatic happens, I think it would be a complete disaster for the Koreans to enter this. It would um, make us die in the same way as it made the Social Democrats die last time and the Liberals die before them. Uh, everybody dies if we get too close to Merkel's, uh, Merkel. Um, and this is totally not in the long-term interest of not even environmental protection, which we made our huge topic in this election campaign. It's not in the interest of the environment to have the Greens see leave the, the parliament in Germany. Not at all. Um, and I think one last point, there's a huge conceptual mistake to um, to see it as the responsibility of the Greens to make this work. No, not at all. I mean, we have a responsibility as Greens to deliver what we promised in our election campaign. That's our only responsibility, not to make a government work or something else. Um, so if this doesn't work, then let's be very clear that this is not only the fault of the Greens, but also of everybody else who would, if they want to make this coalition work, would need to move at least as uh, much as we would. And I think they would face similar difficulties in selling these moves to their own uh, voters. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Christy, maybe if you could also elaborate a bit. Uh, Maurice already spoke a bit about what are the, the, the specific green and red lines. So what do you think should be also the red line of the young greens from a more uh, european perspective from the perspective of the future which we want to have uh, for the european project yeah uh you mean regarding the jamaica coalition or in general exactly regarding yeah. the jamaica coalition yeah so um first of all i agree with the others uh if the greens set their goals they want to make them happen now whatever stands in in our booklet of, of aims and of goals we should try to to make as much happen as possible but um, on the other side we a goal of a party is also to have as much power in parliament so that we can push our aims through and there's the big question can we um, push through our ideas uh, directly in the opposition or would it be better to build a coalition so um of course we have to um, first ask can we engage uh, our ideas with the ideas of the other parties especially with the fdp for example um because there are quite many clashes between the fdp and greener um in relation to uh, external um, trades and so on um the good thing first of all is that we have uh, the opportunity of both so right at the moment we can choose whether to go into a position or to build a coalition so we still have uh, 
um, yeah, we, we can still um, choose which way to go. For example, SPD chose only one way to go. Now they, they said they want to be in that position. Um, but uh, let us see, for example, a coalition with, uh, with uh, the FDP and CDU, um, for example, worked quite good in Schleswig-Holstein, so the most northern uh, state of Germany. They currently have a Jamaica coalition in this federal state. And um, what a Green member from this state said yesterday, um, is that they had to swallow the bitter pill and they had to do many um, cutbacks at some point. But until now, it is working. Of course, this is just a state. We do not know if that is going to work uh, across whole Germany. Uh, yeah, regarding external relations, um, I think there will be a big issue with Greece, for example. Uh, if there will be a Jamaica coalition uh, in Germany, the FTP is, uh, will totally have something against Eurobonds. They will totally have something against um, uh, money cuts for Greece. For example, uh, in their statement, it stands that they want Greece to leave the Eurozone in order to pay uh, from their own money. Uh, this is absolutely, I think, the opposition of uh, the green ideas. And um, yes, I think uh, also women empowerment will be quite hard to uh, to get through um, since CDU and CSU have never been really women friendly for politics um, and the FTP is also as it is a very liberal party um, is not really for quotas uh, we can see that in both parties or in, both, in all three parties that uh, the women quota and the women empowerment is not that strong at all. So, and the Greens somehow ensure this women empowerment. We do not only have this 50-50 quota for uh, the leading chairs, we also think that gender equality is one of the goals. So who would ensure uh, a maintain of gender equality, of climate protection, of international peace, for example, as well, as uh, Germany is one of the biggest export uh, leaders for uh, weapons and um, yeah, who, who would ensure uh, to, to maintaining these very uh, important subjects if the Greens wouldn't build a coalition with uh, these very conservative parties? Um, I'm thinking, Fabian, you're someone who's pretty much interested also in, in issues re relating to global justice and, and the last part of what, what of Christie's intervention kind of related to that. Do you, do you want to add something on it? Uh, no, we, I think we can come back uh, on it later, no? Okay, good. Uh, let's go back to that later. Uh, Moritz, do you have anything to add on, on what has been said before um, with regard to the coalition? I would be, for example, personally very much interested in if you could elaborate a bit more on what are specifically the, the Green Ayugand uh, red lines. You already mentioned deportations uh, to Afghanistan are a no-go. What, what, what is the other no-go? <coughs> um, first, to come, to come back to what we, we, we talked now. Uh, um, one one uh, really difficult thing is that all the environmental groups, um, all the environmental um, um, NGOs in Germany now make really pressure on us to go to this coalition um, because they say, um, please, um, you have to go there because climate change doesn't wait. Um, that's really difficult because, um, in my opinion, they ask us to sell our other policies for um, climate policies, uh, which is understandable because the, the argumentation climate doesn't wait and all the other things we can solve it later. But if we don't act now, uh, the planet goes um, to hell. Um, but I think that this is a very, very short term analysis because um, no, the planet um, isn't surviving if the Greens I will fall out of the parliament in four years. So we have to see this long-term thing. And that's something which Green Jugend especially has in mind uh, to have um, also this long-term um, aspect uh, looking to the future um, of the Green Party. 
And you, you asked me for for other um, really really difficult things. Um, in in my opinion, it's it's um, a social policy because um, the the liberals they want more cuts, they want uh, less uh, social welfare. Um, they don't want anything um, when it comes to tax um, the wealthier part um, to make um, something against the uh, tax havens. Um, they will block uh, everything which, uh, when, it, when it comes to more um, public services, which were one goal for our side. Um, yeah, then I already uh, mentioned... Um, Migration policy, which is a really, really tough field. Um, not only deportations, but also when it comes to um, family, um, um, getting families um, from refugees from um, crisis, uh, crisis countries. Um, another point is the, the European aspect. Um, you already mentioned it. Um, CDU, the Conservatives, it's the party of Wolfgang Schäuble, who is the main actor when it comes to austerity policy. And I can barely imagine how they will justify if they will now step back from austerity policy and invest in Europe. That's really diff uh, difficult to imagine. Um, or let's say Euro bonds. Um, <clears throat> Which makes me really um, feel difficult is when it comes to arguing with Macron because um, some of the Greens do it, say like Macron now goes forward when it comes to Europe. Um, he wants um, to change things in Europe and they see themselves in the tradition or at the side of Macron which helps somehow in this debate, but I don't like to be at the side of Macron because he has really difficult um, policies, for example, when it comes to, to labor stuff. But uh, maybe it's necessary at this moment to say in the German debate, um, we are at the side of Macron when it comes to reforming Europe and stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, so that's, uh, like, I would say it's Europe, it's uh, social policy, migration, and um, climate, like, especially when it comes to tr transportation um, and mobility. That's something, like, the Greens said in their election campaign, we want to shut down um, fossil um, um, motorization. Uh, to, until 2030 and the, the conservatives said that they don't want any limitation because it's anti-industry and stuff. So these are four, four fields I see the hardest um, the hardest things and as already said it's a really difficult environment because all the NGOs say we have to go there. All the media, whole press, even left, left media uh, in Germany, um, writes pro Jamaica. And what you said before, I, I really agree that we should have this openness, and an openness also means an openness to fail, uh, like letting the talks fail. So. That's what I would suggest. Okay, uh, thank you. Well, as, as your co-spokesperson uh, Yamila said, uh, governing is no end to itself. Um, so I think there are quite a lot of uh, difficult debates ahead of, for you. And I think we can keep, your, uh, keep our fingers crossed for you that you will manage uh, to keep also your party accountable and uh, that you will manage to keep your county stand up to its values. Uh, I would maybe now like the next uh, very uh, difficult issue and that is the question of the far right entering um, the Bundestag since um, first time since 1945. Uh, Alternative für Deutschland ended up third on the federal level and in um, some parts of Germany 
such as in Saxony, it was even first. As was already mentioned, um, the CDU-CSU lost probably one million votes to, uh, to AFD. And also, according to some sources, also even the Greens lost some, some votes to AFD. And now Merkel's reaction was that we should listen to, to AFD voters and we should do what um, she would call good politics. And now, before I get maybe to, to the more obvious questions of, 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 of how are we going to fight the far right, um, let's try to start from a bit different angle. Uh, one of the questions which I received yesterday, um, someone from, from the Young Greens, uh, was that um, devoting disproportionately too much attention to, to AFD at the expense of other issue. And at some point, AFD will lose the momentum, uh, and maybe the moment they will get into power, they will not be able to deliver, which is maybe already partly happening. There are already some um, party, um, and maybe the, the, the AFD will discredit itself. What is, what is your position on that? And maybe let's now start again with, with Fabian, then Christy, and then Moritz. Um, yes, I think, first of all, it's super important to know that people do not vote AFD because they expect them to deliver. That's not why you vote far right. <laughs> um, so they will not discredit themselves by not doing anything because nobody expects them to do anything apart from being loud and disgusting and um, against everything. Um, so that's very important to have in mind first. And then second, I think this is a super complicated issue because the short answer would be yes, we are devoting too much attention to the far right and this is what makes them grow. They're thriving on being labeled some kind of a rebel group or whatever. So uh, we should definitely reduce our engagement with them as such or by them, I actually mean their party leaders, their people in the parliament, their like influential people in the party, not necessarily their voters. But when it comes to their voters, there's also some more complex thing going on than just saying, let's uh, just dismiss their uh, concerns. Because whether they are real or not, and they are mostly not real, they have concerns and I'm very, very, very much against uh, this much repeated sentence of paying attention to the concerns of people. No, not at all, but we should take the fact seriously that people have concerns and that they are looking for somebody to give them answers. And I think that's where we as Greens come in. No other party has such good and comprehensive answers to the current problems than the Greens. We are the only ones combining social issues with ecological issues. Um, all the other parties cannot can just not offer such a great um, perspective for the future. So I think it would be our task to realize and acknowledge that people are afraid by all the change that is going on. I mean, it's a lot of change. The world has probably never changed or very rarely changed as much as it does right now so why are we not just going to everybody not only the far right voters but everybody and say we have ideas for the future we don't really care if you're um, afraid about i don't know too many brown people in our country or whatever we just give you our vision for a better future and you can choose whether you want uh, to subscribe to it or not i think um, that would be the way forward, to just offer solutions to real issues which are happening right now. They are not the same as the far right is trying to make us believe, but they are really big issues which we need to fix rather soon. Otherwise, um, it's super easy for the far right to just tell people whatever and people will follow them as long as it seems like they're offering um, at least resistance to the current problems. So I think we should take the role of offering not the like fake solutions as the far right does, but real solutions. And as I said, we as Greens are best positions to do best positioned of all parties to do that. Thank you, Fabian. Uh, Christy, what's what's your stand? Yes. 
Uh, so first of all, I think it was also yesterday in a political debate um, in the TV where uh, a politician from the SPD said that um, during the past uh, year, I think it was in 2016, uh, it was that 56%, so over 50% uh, for sure, um, in these late night talk shows for politicians or between very important persons were mainly based on migration in relation to AFD or AFD in general. So first of all, yes, we had the issue that uh, media and uh, um, the, the general thinking of politics was very much uh, AFD based. Um, yes, and as they are right, we have to ensure that everyone understands that they are right. Um, this didn't come through um, much, I think, in the media. So it was just like uh, the AFD is that scandalous party entering Bundestag, um, basically, and uh, roaring around, and uh, Saxony, and um, in many cases, um, whole Eastern Germany um, with this really Nazis on the streets. Um, but I think that didn't come through quite a lot. So um, the, the, the knowledge that the AFD has thinking such as uh, women go into kitchen again or um, divorced people do not belong into society or um, people should wear um, weapons with them if they want to. Um, that didn't come through quite a lot. And uh, what we should do is to make sure that everyone understands that is, it is a far-right party and you should not vote a far-right party if you want to change something or just because, um, because of frustration, let's say. Um, on the other side, um, yeah, the, the media, as I said, were pressing um, quite a lot on uh, the AFD issues. Uh, migration was one of the biggest things and everything boiled up and uh, somehow we forgot to talk about the or let's say the uh, the general um, collective didn't start talking about climate change for example only the greens did um, and what we saw yesterday was um, there was the second question about if the AFD could just uh, collapse inside itself. Yesterday there was uh, this press um, press engagement by the AFD uh, and what did uh, Frau Petri do? She, she just left so there was another crack inside the party which is of course uh, good because if they collapse we do not have to make them collapse so um, plus, I think, uh, on the other side, what we should do uh, is, I think, as long as we deliver um, what we've promised, as long as we stand to our values, and as long as Greens do a good job, then I think we can somehow um, make AFD uh, smaller again, really. and. Uh, um and be able to win uh, voters back i think also the it depends um i think that w there won't be a great coalition uh, the upcoming years will be quite good one so the great coalition was the coalition between cdu and spd um uh from my point of view one of the uh subjects why many voters went from cdu to afd um regarding their votes um, but we, what we should also do is understand the people, why they voted AFD and over 60% voted the AFD uh, because they, were, uh, they felt or still feel left behind. They were not able to identify themselves with the CDU or the other great uh, bigger parties of Germany. Um, and... Um, that they have the fear that the gap between rich and poor people is growing. And let's have a look at Eastern Germany. Um, there are the people who have less money. Uh, it also has to do with our, our history. Um, for example, the pensions won't be that high in the Eastern regions as it is uh, in the Western part of Germany. This has got something to do with the economy from the uh, German Democratic Republic. Uh, since they didn't, 
earn that much money or there were other uh, other wages uh, that had to be paid um, people in, in Eastern Germany still earn less money why is that it is not only because um, it, no it's not really because these people um, do not know the same or are not on the same um, knowledge bases as Western Germany is but I think uh, in many cases because of stereotypes and if we do not um, find a balance between Western and Eastern Germany and if the East if Eastern Germany so the region where AFD was, uh, was voted very very strongly um, if we do not understand their fear that they absolutely feel left behind and their fear of uh, economical issues uh, then of course these people won't start thinking about um, climate issues or about uh, social issues uh, from abroad or about um, the EU they will totally see themselves, themselves out of the box and that is what we have to understand um, we have to understand their fears for the people uh, for the over 60 percent of people who have voted for the AFD and if we find that out and um, um, yeah, and react on that and change something regarding social politics, for example, then I think uh, AFD will, will collide one day and um, maybe even quite soon. Um, yes. Uh, thank you, Christy. Uh, now, coming to Moritz, um, AFD, is it receiving too much attention or should we be actually really, really ringing the bell? No, I think we, we have to talk about what's the, what are the reasons for um, the AFD, what uh, we can do better. Um, I think or I'd like to say two different, um, I think, two, two different approaches. One thing, um, in our parliamentary group and in the green context, most people who um, work towards AFD, towards right, ex uh, extreme right, um, are people who come from the street activities against um, neo-Nazis and stuff like that, which is good, but which is not enough because the AFD is not only a project of Nazis who were on the streets, but it's a, it's a movement in the society and we have to go with a broader approach. Um, that, so we have to talk about the AFD um, not, only, um, not only in this um, anti-Nazi thing, we have to go in all policy uh, dimensions um, how to reach um, these peoples uh, what's, what's the problem um, and I don't think that all of them are simply racist um, Fabian already mentioned that um, there are polls where only 20-30% um, said that they just that they voted for the AFD out of um, conviction um, because they were um, convinced that they are fighting for their interests. And two-thirds uh, voted for the AFD because they just wanted to vote for the protest against the establishment. And that's something we should ask ourselves. Um, what um, do we take from it? And I think that's something which is difficult in the Green Party, that... Um, Combining um, the rise of um, the nationalists with the social question, not to say it's an automatism that um, we didn't solve the social question, that there is uh, social injustice and um, poor people vote right. That's nothing I want to say. But we have to discuss that social issues are one part um, that the, the feeling of desolidarization of less solidarity in the society um, of the feeling of the state doesn't help me the state isn't here for me but for the others for the refugees for example that's something which makes people 
feeling unsafe, feeling um, make make them aggressive, and um, so one strategy would be um, to make politics um, um, to 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 as government or as opposition party who calls for more um, social welfare for a state which um, is more transparent, like fighting lobbyism is one thing, um, fighting tax havens is the other thing, making a, a social security system where also politicians pay in. So these are things to make the people um, feel that there is solidarity, that there is a state who is interested in their interests um, and who is um, as well as safe or is, is there something like a, let, um, allows them to feel safe um, in their country um, and at the same time that they have um, uh, another understanding. So that's only one dimension. I think there are more dimensions like respect um, uh, people, um, but not respect racists uh, or sexists, for example. So it's a really, really tough thing. And we need as Green Party a really tough analysis of what we did wrong um, and what we should change. Um, so it'll be a hard time. And my fear is that all the Greens are now so happy because it is not the, uh, as worse as expected that overall this happiness we forget to make a really um, an, an analysis uh, which is um, honest. Yeah. Can I add one short point? Sure, go ahead. Fabian. I think I mean, we have been discussing about this issue now for 20 minutes and it made me think that I'm quite convinced we are discussing the wrong question. The question is not how do we react to AFD or how do we react to the far right? The question is not even how do we react? Why don't we just go and say, this is what we stand for. This is our vision for a better future and then push for it because how to fight the far right, how to address different points, how to improve our uh, ability to not piss off too many people by saying what we really want. This is not what young people want. This is not what the people who are poor or uh, suffering under the current uh, situation are asking themselves, not at all. They are asking, where do we go? What future is there for us? What perspectives do we have? And all these questions which we have just discussed are just reacting to what we see right now or even oriented towards the, the past when we address uh, issues uh, that AFD constantly puts on the agenda um, rather than actually engaging with the future and developing a very um, a very convincing vision for the future and then actually telling it to people. So I think we should really, really take a lot of uh, initiative and get out of this reactionary mode, but actually start proposing uh, a credible model for the future to people uh, out on the streets. And then I think all the other questions are actually answering themselves because then we don't really need to uh, see how we uh, react to AFD, how we treat them, what to do with them, uh, if their policy on topic A or topic B is bad or not too bad or whatever what the voters think. No, we just give them what we think is right for uh, them and that gives us credibility, I think. And it obviously leads back to the coalition thing, um, that going into a coalition like that is obviously sacrificing the scarcest resource which we are currently having in politics, which is credibility. Uh, thank you, Fabian, and thank you all for your uh, contributions. I find quite fascinating and uh, like I'm, um, yeah, it um, makes my head spin a bit already. Um, 
so basically the, the strategy we have now discussed a bit was that maybe we shouldn't be that much reactive but rather try to be proactive and try to kind of present some alternative vision for the future and now to me it seems that we quite often already do have this vision but maybe we are not that clear in articulating it and this is also one point which was raised very often during the campaign that there was really not a very clear distinction between the, the parties. The, the electoral debate between Schultz and Merkel was very consensual. There was not, not a, somehow there was not a, there were not very clear dividing lines which would enable the voters to really orientate themselves. And so what I'm asking myself is, um, would it, would it, would actually, would it be an interesting strategy to try to create conflict with our political opponents um, in order to win back those voters who are kind of undecided or confused? Whoever wants to go first. Do you want to do it or shall I? <laughs> I just start. Let's, let's start uh, with yes, Christy. So, yeah. Um, yes, that's true at some point, I think. Um, during the election campaign, we had the issue that um, the topics from SPD and CDU, uh, CSU were quite the same, uh, even in this uh, very only um, TV live debate between Angela Merkel and uh, Martin Schulz. Uh, there was not much that could have been distinguished between these two parties. Um, but what I think is that there was quite a difference, you could find quite a difference even as a non-party person um, between uh, Grüne, of course, so the Greens um, had, I think, a very, uh, from, from many people's point of views, um, they had their vision of um, a green climate, but also um, fairer economies. Um, yes, so very, very strong issues. Uh, I didn't find um, another po political party that had the same issue, except the left party. They were also for uh, for fairness and economy. Um, AFD, of course, there was a, there there was a huge gap from my point of view. Um, and next to AFD, there was of course MPD and so on. So what they uh, what you could clearly see um, the blocks, but uh, yet yeah, true there there was um, this huge a uh, thing of, of SPD and CDU which just was at some point just one mass and uh, to create conflict during election so before election time um, is I think a good strategy um, you do not have to be super aggressive but I think at some point um, we have to show how keen we are to get the votes and um, uh, for example, the, the Greens, from my point of view, have always been um, a very, very social party, of course, and um, at some point a very friendly party. So um, they said, please vote for us. We got very, very, very good input. But on the other side, we there, ha there were parties that were super aggressive. So the FDP, for example, um, this year they had that this huge one-man show um everyone knew what it was about like oh my god let's push up economy um again and uh, don't wait much longer and slogans like that so i think a bit more aggressiveness from outside or from from each party's side would be quite good uh, i think that would be nice nicer strategy because then we can avoid this um this mix up of uh, parties. Uh, thank you, Christy. I would now give the word to Moritz because you will need to be leaving around eight, if I'm not mistaken. And I would just like to remind everyone who is listening to us that you can still send us questions. You can do so either by posting your questions in um, the Facebook of this talk or um, on YouTube or you can send them to us by Twitter using the hashtag Young Green Talks. So the, 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 now the floor is yours. Can, can, uh, can you, hello? Um, you're, are we having technical issues? Yeah, hello? 
Moritz, can you hear us? I can hear you. We, we hear you as well, or I hear you at least. <laughs> yes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you will have to be leaving, right? So maybe uh, one last point. Um, uh, creating conflict, yes or no? And uh, what do the, the German elections mean for the European Parliament elections, which will be taking place in 2019? What, what, what is the lesson we take out of them? Moritz, we can't hear you. I can't hear you now. Oh, okay, now? Better? Now, yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, for 2019, I think it's too early to say what we can um, take. Um... And it looks like we have lost Moritz completely. We can see if he comes back at some point. Um, we in the meantime, yes, so we, we have received now one question, um, which is relates to the, to the age of the voters and um, the different parties. So how were the different um, voter preferences spread it uh, according to, to, to the age? If I'm not mistaken, Greens were third, uh, between 18 to 24. Is this the case, Fabian? Can you can you give us more input? Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I actually think we were fourth of the, the left party, conservative social democrats and left party. But yeah, well, we were third or fourth. I think it doesn't really matter too much because the differences were not too huge, if I remember correctly. If you have any numbers, please correct me. Um, yes, so I found now one, so I have one, one uh, statistics from uh, Spiegel, which is saying that the Greens were the third largest party among voters 18 to 24, and they were fourth, if you look at the group, from 18 to 29. And 18 to 29, FDP was, was the first party. Generally speaking, it seems that uh, Greens are quite successful in attracting young voters, and that's not only the case in Germany, but also in other uh, European countries. Uh, Fabian, could you maybe elaborate a bit more on how the German young Greens were uh, targeting specifically the youth? Um, you were also there for, for the start of their campaign. Susanna, if you can still hear us, I lost you at least. Yeah, I lost her as well. But maybe you can just start. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gradually uh, losing everybody. Um, yes, I think their success success um, was based in actually, as we already discussed earlier, in actually addressing the issues which uh, do really matter to people. Um, by laying out their own vision for a better future, because as we know, many things don't work for young people. I said it when uh, in my speech when we opened the campaign that if you are a young person, or also if you are uh, a non-male person, if you are a non-white person, uh, then things are really not going that well for you as everybody else uh, tries to make us believe because you don't find jobs, you don't find housing, you don't really have a vision for future, you uh, don't really know how the uh, old people are going to fuck up your future uh, even more. Um, so I think that was the root of their success to uh, um, actually analyze what do young people want and then show them that they have uh, a credible alternative for them, which is obviously not for all right. Yes, uh, so their campaign was uh, focusing now, um, it was focusing on three main topics. Um, I will now replace a bit Moritz, who needed to leave. Uh, so the the, the Green Jugend was uh, campaign was focusing on three main topics. One of them was climate change. The other one was uh, diversity under the uh, slogan "Live Live as You Want," uh, and the third topic was urban development and the right to the city. 
and uh, I had the impression also the diversity part of the campaign had a kind of a strong uh, feminist touch in it. Uh, so it was also very interesting, uh, the, the campaign. What I, what I was wondering a bit, um, and that's, that's also again a big general question, uh, with regard to climate change, the, the cru crucial issue was uh, the, the swift departure from fossil fuels. Um, and, and German Young Greens were also very much active and, and taking part in the anti-coal and the Gelende protests. And uh, my question to, to you, uh, Christian Fabian, would be, what do you think should be the relationships uh, of, of Young Greens to, to the movements and, and protest groups in general? And also, how do you think we, we can um, gain their trust if we enter the, 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 the arena as, as a political subject? Uh, also, maybe in relation to what Moritz said today, that um, there is now quite a lot of expectation and, and hopes from different environmental groups and also a lot of pressure from environmental groups for the Greens to enter the coalition fight um, for, against climate change. So, so what do you think th th this relationship could be and, and should be? Start. Yes, I can start. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, before um, before giving a hint, if we um, what we will do in future is um, rather to stick to those movements or to say uh, we 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 are like from we have the same roots but we go different ways, and uh, I think um, cooperating at some point with. Uh, with uh, movement groups and with climate protection groups, for example, would be a huge plus for um, for climate protectors, for um, in many cases young people um, who want to engage more with climate protection, and also many left uh, wingers. Um, so, if uh, this is, of course, a very um, could be very nice approach um, to to get more, um, to become more even uh, left. Um, and on the other side, um, there's of course this, um, the big dilemma inside. If we, if we want to, to say, yes, we are like super green kids, we belong to the movement. Um, the, mo those movements or many of, of uh, green movements um, always prefer going into opposition than, um, than sticking to a coalition. Of course, a position is um, in many ways um, always easier. I mean, if you are if you are part of a big coalition, you have to stand um, behind uh, behind the big agenda of the coalition, and uh, this is also very um, pressurous for for us as well. But um, and on the other side, um, if we say our relationship does not go into the uh, into the direction of these movement groups um, we we will somehow as said in the beginning um, and we will some therefore go into a uh, coalition or uh, let's say we we lose somehow parts of our soul if we say it like that um, then of course we can lose uh, pretty many voters from the uh, left wing side but could also gain more people from the um, more economically thinking or more liberal side. So um, I think this is a very interesting um, part as, for example, the, the German Greens are also split into um, three base groups, let's say. So the more leftish people, the more um, realistically thinking people, and then a small group in the middle. So if we stick to the green movement groups, uh, we will gain more uh, more people from the left wing side, uh, but if we say okay, um, we we have to build somehow a, um, a leading a leading chair, uh, we will go into coalition, uh, then we might lose this left wing, but could also gain more on the on the uh, realistically thinking, um, more um, liberally thinking, economically thinking group. Um, I think that is one of the core questions uh, we sometimes have uh, inside the Greens. So always the question, do you prefer left or do you prefer right? Do you belong to left? Do you belong to right? Um, maybe 
it becomes one day so hot that the greens could split up and become something like a uh, groene links from from the Netherlands so that are more leftish. Um, or um, I think there is also a party called Denk, which is um, quite liberally thinking, but uh, also adopts um, many uh, topics from the green side. If I, and please correct me if that is wrong. Um, yes, so uh, there's a big question. And um, I think it depends on, on the members of the party themselves. <coughs> Should I continue? Sorry, my I'm microphone lost. was muted. <laughs> yes, uh, please, please continue. Greens and um, movements. What is our relationship? How can we make it uh, kind of mutually beneficial? I think we should not forget that the Green Party uh, here in Germany, especially, and uh, probably everywhere else as well, developed out of movements. and. It's also very important to have in mind that we did not only develop from the environmentalist movement, even though obviously they were a big part, but just as much we are the result of the queer movement, the feminist movement, the peace movement. Um, and they have something to say as well. So when uh, Moritz says that the environmental organizations or movements are uh, already starting to pressurize us, yes, and that's totally fine because uh, they form a part of our uh, of our big green organism kind of thing. Um, but let's not forget that other movements uh, are part of the greens as well. And I think it's also good to see the greens not so much as a party in that sense but as the political wing of a movement. So I think uh, we should not try to think too much about how, um, or we should not think about our relationship to movements as if they were something different. We are one and the same thing. And um, I think it's very dangerous for Greens to actually lose this connection to their movement because this is where the actual change is done, not necessarily in the parliament. I mean, this is obviously where change is implemented, where it is uh, put into proper writing and legislation and everything, but the real change is made in the movements. For example, in the um, when the Greens started to push for the end of nuclear energy that was not done in the parliament and it was not realistic i mean we started to push for the end of nuclear energy when nobody saw this as a realistic uh, option it was not realistic until we made it reality actually so i think it's super crucial that uh, we don't lose this attachment or the connection to the uh, to all the different movements which are forming us because by having this super close relationship by seeing what they need us to do in politics and also by um, by kind of guiding them towards what we would see fit um, how they can support our fight in the parliament is super crucial to um, actually achieve long-term change in the way which we would like to see because if we lose this movements have the ability to actually shape public perception and this is what enables us to implement change in parliament if we just implemented the end of nuclear energy for example without having the movement actually pushing society towards accepting this then the next uh, government would actually be able to just come back and say okay that's the end let's go back to it without facing any vast opposition right now it's unthinkable or uh, not as unthinkable as i would like it to be but uh, rather unthink unthinkable in Germany to get, go back to nuclear energy. And that's not the achievement of a party, but of a huge movement. And then uh, if we manage to actually um, keep the movements very close to us, we can implement change or push for change, even if we are not in government. I mean, the end of nuclear energy, the end of mandatory military service, the end of a super antiquated image of uh, marriage 
that was all implemented not by us, but it was made possible by us by being the political wing of a of a vast movement which shifts society the perception of society. So I think that's where the real power lies. Let's not make them walk away by entering unwise coalitions, for example. Um, okay, so it seems that we are actually question of, of the coalitions and it seems that that's really like the, the very burning issue which is also intriguing a lot of young Greens and we have received a question on Facebook uh, where uh, some um, a member of, from the Swedish Young Greens is asking us if we could actually come back to this discussion on the green responsibility in the Jamaica coalition or the possible Jamaica coalition. Um, and he is asking, what can Merkel give the Greens? What is the danger? Uh, and is the CSU, CSU a special hardcore coalition partner for the Greens? Christy or Fabian, whoever wants to go first, uh, the floor is yours. You go Christy because, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> then I start. Uh, yes, so um, the green responsibility, if it comes to the coalition, and um, I think I am one of the few German Greens who says that I am in for a coalition uh, already. Um, because, not only because the Greens take the, have to, has to take the responsibility to, um, to to merge with others into the coalition uh, contract as soon as possible. Um, Re-elections have never happened in Germany before, and I think it is part of our uh, collective thinking that this should not happen at all ever. So uh, there's one responsibility. Of course, it's a big pressure because at some point it just takes. Um, and takes the air out of our wings to decide whether to go into opposition or into coalition. Um, but if we should uh, start a coalition together with FDP and CDU slash CSU, then it is, as I said earlier, um, it is our responsibility to make sure that a maintaining of gender equality, so or women empowerment at least inside Europe, the European Union and Germany as well um, to ensure this second of course to ensure climate protection, uh, to ensure international uh, peace, um, to ensure um, social thinking, to make economy uh, more responsible again. Um, these are many things where we clash together with the FDP um, and also, uh, yes, with, with the other parties, for example. Uh, the CSU is, from my point of view, um, would be a hard uh, partner for the coalition because that has got something to do with um, the character of this um, party. Um, this party, the CSU, is, is kind of a sister party, which is only in Bavaria. You can only vote in Bavaria, so the ge geologically biggest state in Germany for the CSU. And Bavaria, as well as the CSU, has have always been quite um, yeah, um, conservative. Um, they <laughs> quite yes. So uh, regarding um, the women's issue, for example, is until today a big thing. So the conservative thinking of mother, father, child, uh, perfect marriage, and so on that goes directly from the CSU. As well, they are not really keen on saving the planet um, right at the moment. Um, the political leaders are basically old white male politicians um as a matter of fact um but we 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 should be able to to be strong enough to hold against that and to ensure um our that our beliefs are being pressed through 
um, also with the FTP, it, it's going to be very hard. Um, as I said earlier, um, with Greece, um, they want Greece to to be um, out of the eurozone. They want Greece to uh, to have their drachme again. And uh, you know what that what that means if if Greece gets their um, original um, monetary back, uh, they won't be able to pay anything back because uh, their drachma is uh, in relation to the euro uh, has lost so much weight that it is almost it will never ever be possible let's be true um, to, to pay back what they uh, what they lend uh, the European Union and it goes on and it goes on and goes on so euro bonds for example as well as a big issue we have to um, fight for at some point uh, maybe not all greens are for that but um, the FTP as it is a very neoliberal party um, they uh, want the market to be as free as possible uh, no matter how many people might lose their jobs uh, no matter what is going to happen with the with the banks and with their status um, they I think want the status quo to um, yeah, to, to just to stay and um, I think um, the CDO you is quite easy to assess since we have them for over 12 years but now that there could be the option of building a coalition um, CSU and FTP could become um, more enemy-ish like um, than, than the CDU is Um, so my sense is a bit different from uh, what you just <laughs> said, Christy, but thanks a lot, by the way, for explaining um, the difference between CDU and CSU and what it, uh, what conservatives entail in Germany, because I think not everybody uh, is that aware of uh, this uh, slightly messy situation. Um, so what I think is that I tend to not care too much about FDP. I mean, I really don't like them, but I think the real day and they become more dangerous every day. But I think the real danger is actually the CSU, the Bavarian Conservatives, because they are not necessarily, in my opinion, they are not conservative, as uh, you said, Christy. They are a far right party. Um, they have been a major factor in making the narrative of AFD, of the far right, of the Nazis in this party, socially acceptable in our country again. It was not so much themselves, at least not in the initial state, stages, it was the constant picking topics up by the conservatives in Bavaria and putting them out there using their huge publicity and their huge reach to make it acceptable to say all the things that AFD are saying. I mean, the topics are very often quite the same. They're calling for this upper limit for uh, refugees. They constantly talk about um, the alleged changes that our country is uh, experiencing and they're constantly relating them, these changes to people coming from overseas or from abroad. So, the success of AFD is to a very large extent their success, if you want to call it that way. They made it and they made them this big and you can very clearly see it in Bavaria as well. In Bavaria itself, as I mentioned earlier, that's where AFD was most successful in all the Western countries. Um, and the reason is very clearly because people thought, well, uh, why should we vote for these copycats if we could go for the original? And the original is the far right. Um, so, what did I want to say? Yes, I think about the coalition with them. Uh, it's super dangerous for Greens to actually legitimize all these verbal um, escapades by entering a coalition with them because that would obviously infringe our ability to criticize this very very loudly and they and these uh, 
um, and the statements of the C of CSU and also parts of the CDU of Merkel's party, they need to be criticized super loudly. And I don't really see why we would infringe our ability to do so. If we infringe our own ability to criticize these super far, super far right statements like um, which are against Islam, against everybody who has a slightly darker skin color than us, who has uh, who comes from places a bit further away than Eastern Europe or Southern Europe. Um, if we, I forgot what I said before, but the fact is we cannot accept this. And ah, yeah, if we infringe our ability to say that we cannot accept this because we are actually supporting them in the government, then we are losing what I said earlier, what I said is the most precious resource in politics, we are losing our credibility. And that's not the only thing because this is not about us, because this is about a shift of our society to the right, which we don't want to see, not only because it's bad for our election results, because it's bad for our country, it's bad for everybody in this country, in the, on this continent, it's just somewhere we don't want to go. We have been there, especially in Germany, we don't want to go there again. We don't want to legitimize any exclusionary, racist, homophobic, xenophobic uh, language by forming uh, a coalition with them. And again, just to remember, uh, just to remind everybody of that, I am totally in favor of just listening to what they have to say in the exp um, in this pre coalition negotiations and then if things uh, go that way also in the coalition negotiations themselves i think we should listen to them but i really don't see how the csu is modifying their language especially their exclusionary language which they are using so that it becomes acceptable for us and we didn't even start to talk about what they actually do on top of what they talk about. Um, but if we go there, I think uh, things become even clearer and I already make my point. Okay. Uh, thank you both. So for anyone who is who has joined um, right now, uh, you are listening and you are watching the green late night talk and now it's really late night and we will be slowly probably uh, moving towards wrapping up but you still have the possibility to ask us questions you can do so on our uh, facebook page on on the on the page of this event which is titled green late night talk german federal elections or you can do so by uh, via twitter uh, by tweeting to us uh, under the hashtag young green talk and there are two more questions um which, and I'll be those uh, asking those questions. So the first question is um, relates actually to the debate we were having previously on young people uh, and uh, the voting patterns and voting behavior of, of young people. Present asking, how can we make sure that uh, youngsters um, go and vote? Uh, and the second question is um, a bit of a different area. Uh, we have one member of the Turkish Young Greens asking us if, um, asking us actually about Turkish German citizens and their voting behavior. Um, and he would like to know if, um, if actually Erdogan had any effect on, on their elections. Um, and citizens, um, were somehow uh, in any way influencing the election or maybe what was also their, their voting behavior. So those would be the two questions. In the meantime, if you have any other questions and if you're listening to us, don't hesitate to, to, to ask. And I would again like to ask um, Christy uh, to share their views on those two issues. And shall we again start with, I would suggest we again start with Christy and then go to Fabian. Yes. If that's okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, for the first question, um, how do we make sure youngsters 
go to vote. Yeah, I think if I knew uh, the answer, it would be quite easy to ensure that uh, upcoming elections will, first of all, be very good for the Greens, um, since many young people are voting uh, the Greens, and also uh, to make sure that democracy will happen in future as well. So um, this, yeah, the answer, uh, please uh, post me something if, if you know the answer. But uh, what I can say until now is uh, all we can do is um, give information to people, um, make them um, start thinking about politics again, uh, engage young people into politics, because once you've started when you were young um, going into politics, then you will stick to this issue, I think, for the rest of your life. And um, um, just... Um, Go to that question. So, if we go, um, um, you know, deep into the materia, uh, what they are interested in. So, for example, uh, future jobs or climate uh, change is also a very important uh, future issue. Uh, the future of Europe as well, big issue. Um, how will we go on? How will we uh, deepen the European Union? Um, how will economy? Um, go for the upcoming uh, decades. Um, how will marriage equality, for example, um, uh, become global? Uh, if we stick to these issues, so to issues that are very important to youngsters, then I think we can gain more and more voters to go uh, to vote. And I think as the Greens have many of these issues already covered, um, we are on we are, could be a very quite good model to uh, to show how to make young people vote um yes uh, from the uh, member of the turkish green uh, young party um i do not know any results regarding the turkish german voters um maybe you know it um berlin for example is a very multicultural very um um, on Arabic and Turkish um, identities based um, cultural city, um, very cosmopolitic. And uh, I think there the outcome was quite good. It was, was not nationalist or something like that. But regarding the rest, I do not really know. And um, with Erdogan and his effect on the elections, uh, I think it's didn't swell uh, in the last month um, since um, there is kind of a mental blockade at the moment between Merkel and Erdogan. Uh, there hasn't, um, well, regarding the past uh, weeks and the months before was, or last year, for example, was quite hard. Um, there was this um, vote in, in Turkey where German uh, Turkish based people could also vote for and I think it was half of the Turkish people who voted in favor of Erdogan's um, pol political strategies for future um, issues and uh, his uh, empowerment. Um, um, yeah, regarding Turkey, I'm not quite sure about the outcome. Erdogan's effect on the elections was, from the point of view from my people, not much stronger than, for example, um, the, the Russia-German relation or, or the French-German relation or um, Brexit-EU-German relation. I would say it was kind of the same, but that is just my um, uh, per perceived uh, look. Um, from my side, let me start with the um, with the notion of foreign um, states meddling in our uh, elections. I think that's a question to uh, for I don't know secret services or whoever is responsible for finding out these uh, about these things. Not it's not a discussion. It's something that needs to be found out. And I quite dislike that these. Um, these 
I mean, it's obviously important to know who is influencing the election in what way, and Erdogan certainly tried to uh, to uh, make his mark, uh, put his mark on this election result by, for example, calling um, uh, the many German Turkish or Turkish German people uh, in Germany to vote for. Uh, to not vote for Greens, Social Democrats, and Liberals, as far as I know, or basically everybody. Um, but I think, yeah, that's not on us to discuss um, what was done, because we just don't know uh, the fact. And I hope somebody does know them, but uh, it's certainly not my responsibility to find out about this. Um, what about the question with the young people? Um, I can just come back to what I said earlier, that I think young people go to vote when they see somebody is taking care of their future. Because obviously it's, uh, it's probably a matter of statistics that young people just have a vast proportion of their lives ahead of them. So they want to know what is going to happen in the future and they go to vote if they feel they can actually make the future or contribute to make the future a better one for themselves. And I think we Greens are quite successful already in doing that, as all the um, all the polls show um, when they ask young voters what they voted for. Um, but yeah, I think it's just about that. I wanted to say something else, but I lost um, the other point. Yes, I think we are all getting a little bit tired already. Um, so last call to anyone who is listening and watching uh, the, the green late night talk uh, on the German federal elections. Uh, this is your last chance to post any question either on our on the page of the Facebook event, which is titled uh, Green Late Night Talk or uh, on our um, Twitter account, you can tweet us by using the hashtag Young Green Talk. This is the last chance. And uh, if there are no questions, then I would suggest we can, we will definitely have a similar debate um, when the coalition talks proceed. We, we can see if we can um, have a, have a follow-up on this debate. We will have also more debates on other elections which are uh, ahead of us, uh, for example, in the Czech Republic uh, in the next month. And now maybe to wrap up today's debate, uh, last questions, question to you, uh, Fabian and um, Christy, the same question as I already asked Moritz, and that is, um, what do you think we can learn from the German elections for the European Parliament elections in 2019? Because this is something which we are trying to build up to start, well, these months, basically. Christy, do you want to start and then we finish with Fabian? Okay, I can do that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what can we learn? Um, I think what we can learn is that um, parties that were strong for decades can shrink immediately if uh, some parts yet didn't work that well. And uh, so, first of all, we should have a look and on uh, did the parliament, the European parliament, worked well uh, in the past years? Uh, did they work well together with the European Commission? Um, also with the Council of the European Union? Uh, external relations, could we do um, good things uh, regarding migration politics, which is also a very big issue for the European Union, since uh, member states are um, basically the gate for refugees, the, the first gates to enter Europe for refugees from from Africa and uh, uh, from from uh, the the Arabic world, um, and if we can answer the question positively, then I think the next elections are going to be normal as always. So you can somehow 
um, sum up what is going to happen. On the other side, if, if people think, well, let's be honest, they did a mir miserable job, then even the, the bigger uh, parties can shrink immediately. For example, the, um, the Christian party or the uh, Social Democrats um, party. Um, also regarding the very uh, EU um, critic parties, for example, UKIP, okay, they will be gone soon uh, by March 2019, but also um, some members from the AFD are already in the European Parliament. Uh, Beatrix von Stoy, for, for example, she is also a very radical woman. Um, they are already in the Parliament and they can gain more power regarding the migration issue. Um, Brexit has happened and uh, therefore we first of all also have, must have a look on uh, what is going to happen with British economy. Um, is the procedure from opting out of the European Union positive for the EU, for the whole Europe in general or is it just positive for uh, for Britain uh, if they can stay, for example, in the single market? And um, yeah, I think it's always a, a balance between uh, economical and social issues. So if the if the gap in social issues uh, was rising the recent years, for example, uh, between Eastern uh, Europe and Western Europe, then there will be quite a big fraction um, which we have to tackle as the Greens because we absolutely stand for the EU, we stand for integration, we stand for um, for human aid, for humanitarian aid and um, also with the, with the economical issue. Um, once we are out of the full uh, scenario of the big crisis from 2007-2008, then we must be able to get the whole uh, automatism going to uh, let um, let the economy grow, which is currently happening already, but uh, also let the others engage uh, the euro, for example. And uh, so altogether, what we can learn from the German elections, um, I think, uh, it is a pity, it is really a pity, it's, a sh it's, it's shit basically, uh, that the far right wing might grow, I really think so, um, at some point, um, there's, there's no excuse for that, for that but, um, and what, also, what I also think is that the green group might grow because of uh, the Paris Agreement, for example, uh, because of um, big climate changes such as Hurricane Irma, for example, happened and we could grow from that. So that was my last point. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christy. And now, Fabian, uh, up to you to, to give the closing words. Um, no pressure. Maybe to the, to the, to the <laughs> lesson, lessons learned um, for, uh, for the European Parliament elections in 2019. Um, I think some one extremely important point to take away from uh, what we are currently seeing in Germany is that there's nothing to be won by just being the environment party. The environment is super crucial, super important, but it's not the only thing that determines our future. And people know that this is not the only thing that determines our future. Um, I mean, everybody pretends that we won and yes there was a very marginal increase of uh, uh, our voter share but i would not say that we won we had the best possible um platform to really rise there were there have been hurricanes there have been droughts there have been floods there has been freak weather in berlin around the world there are famines there's this huge diesel scandal, there was uh, an issue about uh, healthy food or safe food when they found some weird contamination in X. So we would have had the best starting base for really rising to become the third biggest party, but we did not achieve this. Um, 
And I think one of the big reasons is that people know if they want to live safe in the future, then yes, climate, yes, environment are big parts of this, but they are not the only thing. Um, so, so I think if we really want to increase our voters share, then we need to offer people a more holistic approach to the future, a more complete picture of the future than just saying we are the ones uh, taking care of the of the environment. Um, then one other point which I think is uh, extremely important is that we need a very clear profile as Greens and that includes being a bit radical or quite radical or very radical where uh, it is necessary. For example, um, also in our language, the way we talk about things has not been ideal at all and also contributed to making us being seen as just the environment party, for example, when leading people of the parties uh, sit in talk shows and say that they would be the first ones to deport to Afghanistan if it was only safe or uh, who continue to engage in this uh, treacherous talk about fighting the root causes of migration, which is totally not the thing. They are fighting the refugees and um, also it makes us appear as if we would be against migration and that obviously makes us appear as if there is no difference between us and all the others because everybody else is also against migration. So really taking care that our language is very crystal clear and transmits what we actually stand for, an open society, a society in which everybody has the right to move and live in safety and security. Um, this is super important and I think it's also extremely important to remember that we are not doing this to increase our voter share. We are doing this because we really do care about our fucking future. So let's just remember this. <laughs> great. Uh, thank you for this final statement. I think it was a great uh, wrap up. We have received actually two questions on the event page. They both relate again to the coalition. So this is apparently something which really triggers everyone and probably a lot of people will not be able to sleep tonight because of the coalition talks. And I would suggest that we take those questions and we try to address them next time and we try to organize a next round when the coalition talks um, somehow proceed and there is maybe more um, to talk about and we can go also more in depth also on the possible alternatives um etc etc so i i hope those two people who host questions were not we were not able to address this time will be happy with us addressing them next time and and uh, that that also all of you who have joined us for tonight's talk will also join us um next time we will try to see when we can organize it it will also depend on um how the the, the talks will proceed um, and yes, so this was our third uh, green late night talk. Now it's really getting late night. Um, so thank you all for uh, listening to us and for asking uh, questions. Uh, I think we get a lot of very, very interesting inputs. Um, and we will see how the coalition talks uh, develop. And I think it will be very, there are very interesting days and weeks ahead of us and we will keep following on them and uh, yes keep in touch with fig and keep in touch with us for more similar events and again many thanks to christy and to fabian and to moritz for um, for participating in this talk and i also want to especially thank to niels uh, who organized this talk and who really put a lot of effort in in bringing us here together so thank you all thank you migration working group and see you next time bye bye bye, bye, -bye.